Awesome. We're going to look at the class one RPD design. This one uh, we should be able to handle very well because we've just gone through that other video, but there was one or two subtle nuances that I want to go through. One is the bottom teeth, they generally don't have a great undercut on the canines. The canines usually tip back pretty well relative to the path of insertion. So I'm measuring the path of insertion first, and we're going to use table tilting to help us get around this problem as well as a subtractive method. Okay, so that's the point of this video is to show the subtractive method and the table tilting to help us with retention relative to our path of insertion. Okay, so having measured those, um, those guide planes, I can see that they're going to be insufficient um, just from experience with giving us good retention. Now let's get a close up on this. Look, yep, we're super low. We're almost on the gingiva. We need to stay about four millimeters above the tissue, about right there or here at the worst. We're well below that. We're almost sitting on the tissue, which will create inflammation, will create a problem. Now look at this. This is what I was talking about. We've got the lowest undercut gauge and we're almost sitting on the tissue and we're still not even touching the vertical bar. That's a problem. This is very common on the bottom jaw. The bottom jaw is usually this situation or just the canine to canine with the anterior teeth. So how do we manage this? Well, we could tip. Yeah, we can tip the table. We didn't talk about that in the last video, but we knew we could tip. Now watch what happens when you tip. Aha, look, I can bring that up and engage exactly where I would like. That's cool. By tipping the table, I change the undercut position. Awesome. However, what commonly is the case on these lower anteriors is by tipping, it means that already bad canine is now in a worse spot. Not always. Sometimes you can change the table to help both of them align. So how am I going to get around this? First, we talked about table tilting. So this is the current table tilt height of contour. Okay, we'll trace both the guide planes just to give us an idea. Look how high that is. I have got tons of room to play here. Look how high this one is. Wow, almost to the top of the tooth. If I tip that table forward, it'll deepen the undercut on the other surface. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, there's that undercut. Let's tip. Okay, I'm going to unscrew this on the back. Oh yeah, I do want to show you. Look how high this is. <laughs> we already did. And look how high this is. Now let's tip the table. By tipping it forward, relative to that piston that drops down with the analyzing rod, we're now going to change our guide planes to a more tipped forward position. Okay, so if I were to put a graphite pencil in and draw that, you would be able to see that we've changed our path of insertion quite substantially. By changing the path of insertion just a little bit, we will be able to deepen the undercuts on the facial, allowing us to use perhaps um, a class one undercut gauge. Okay, so now let's redraw the line with the graphite pencil and support strut. Okay, great, great, great. And now, were we to examine the back of it, we could see, ah, we are much lower. We've tipped forward more, okay? I can now get a nice flat plane if I do a little tiny re resection of that tooth. This one is lower. You'll see it better when I turn. Okay, we'll turn the table just a little bit so you can get a better glimpse of this. There you go, see that? It's just a little bit lower. Now we're gonna be changing our orientation. So I've got the undercut gauge in now, and now look, that, un that canine, it's now at the height I want it because we tipped the table an undercut gauge. However, this one's still a problem. As much as we tried, we still have a problem. So this is where the subtractive method comes in. Watch this. What I'll do is I'll just cut in 0.25 millimeters, hardly anything compared to when we cut an, our, an FPD. This is just 0.25 millimeters. And so when we go into the mouth in the patient, we'll just make a tiny little resection there. So we didn't have to cut the canine. We got around that by tilting. We had to cut the premolar with subtractive methods. And we'll show that in the cutting video how we do that, okay? So you can see that undercut gauge, that undercut is good. This one, it'll now drop in because those tables, this side will drop in because we've cut the, the guide planes down lower by tipping the table, okay? Pretty cool. Slick little way to get around that problem. Now let's do rests. Rests in this case, we'll put a rest here and we'll create uh, a problem for us when we tip it's going to create a class one lever, which is going to really torque the tooth because the retentive element will be on the mesial. So what we generally do, as we talked about the RPI system, the RPI usually puts the rest on the mesial. Okay, we'll go ahead and delineate that. All right. Okay, so with the rest on the mesial, watch this. When we bite down, it's going to disengage anything on distal to the rest. Okay, see it slowly dropping there? 
as that pen acts as the partial denture being bit down, the bite force is in the back. In between the bite and the fulcrum is the, um, the load or the retentive element, and we'll be disengaging that in a class two lever. So that's a, a more efficient way to manage that force. Okay, the other tooth is a little bit tricky. We don't have a premolar, we've done premolar work. We have to use the anterior because that's all there is. We're close to the pulp, we can't cut in very deep, and we can't be very high because this tooth is pitched. We can't really push down like we could on the uh, premolar teeth. We are above the height of contour, so it should be a supporting, but look at the angle, we are on a wedge. Now, these two areas will create a fulcrum right there as we bite on the back. It'll lift the other teeth, and as we eat sticky food, it'll tip forward. So we're gonna create what's called indirect retention, and I can do that just by adding a little clasp going off the front. So as it's starting to rock up, this little guy will stop it. Okay, you'll see as I move that expo marker, you'll see what I'm talking about. We'll be fulcruming around those two we just made, and that little guy, as we fulcrum up by eating sticky foods, will stop us from rocking. We'll talk more about indirect retention in class, but that's a good visualization of what that would look like, okay? Perfect. You just gotta look at what we're probably gonna do with this with this cast in the mouth. We could also have done it, chose to do it on the canine, but again, because of the biological problem with going into the pulp, the mechanical uh, advantage would be a little bit more because we'd be moving the, the uh, fulcrum point forward, and that helps in class two situations to decrease the uh, resistance arm force. But because the um, mechanical advantage is little, it's nice to just have the um, safety of just using the premolar. Okay, let's now move on to prepping our rest seats.